What's going on everyone? My name is Nima and today I'll be sharing an overview of our recent publication on World Neurosurgery titled Equivalent Efficacy and Safety of Radiosurgery for Cystic and Solid Vestibular Schoenomas. This was a systematic review of recent body of evidence regarding the efficacy of stereotactic radiosurgery in treatment of vestibular schoenomas by Eli Massa and colleagues. Vestibular schoenomas, also known as acoustic neuromas, are a benign tumor of the vestibular nerve and come in solid and cystic variants. Their close proximity to the facial nerve and other important structures makes their surgical treatment difficult and with a lot of potential for adverse effects. Surgical resection of the cystic variant is especially challenging because they, did, they tend to adhere to the surrounding structures. Radiosurgery, which destroys tumors by directing ionizing radiation to their precise location, has been a well-established mode of treatment for the solid type. However, post-radiosurgery reports of rapid growth and rupture of the cyst has made the use of radiosurgery for these subtypes more controversial. What Eli and our team did was to search these databases for studies reporting radiosurgical outcomes of the cystic and solid vestibular schoenomas. We conducted a meta-analysis and used random effect models with generic inverse variance methods to calculate overall pooled estimates. We also conducted a quality assessment of these studies using Newcastle Ottawa criteria. We screened around 3,000 studies and selected six observational ones, which combined had 1,358 vestibular schoenoma cases. The median maximal dose was 25 gray and the marginal tumor dose was 12 gray. Now as a medical student, I have no idea what that last sentence meant, but I've been assured it's important information. We found radiosurgery to be equally effective for cystic vestibular schoenomas and have summarized the characteristic of these tumors, their response to radiosurgery, and their reported and their reported complications in the table two of our manuscript. We also found a considerable heterogeneity in definition of the cystic tumors, which is also presented in table two. Another interesting finding was that the presence of cysts may not necessarily increase the risk of tumor growth or its adverse effects post radio surgery. There was a considerable heterogeneity among the studies we looked at, so we have also summarized the limitation and future areas of potential research for those of you who are interested. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of our manuscript. Let us know what you think in the comment section, and if you have any new publications that you would like us to summarize, also let us know.